بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم It is a great honor for me today to present this video to you of my life. Please forgive the fact that I'm speaking in English, which is my mother tongue, as my Persian is too conversational and not formal enough. I was born in 1938 in Tehran, Iran, from a Persian father, Dr. Abul Qasem Bakhtiar, MD, the first Iranian to finish medical school in the United States, Syracuse University, 1926, and returned to Iran, and an American mother, Helen Jeffries Bakhtiar, who was the first American to marry an Iranian and go back to Iran, or go to Iran in 1931. So that my six brothers and sisters and I are the first generation of Iranian Americans. My American mother brought me to the United States when I was six months old, and it, because at that time it was not safe for Americans to be in Iran, it was 1939, and Reza Shah was siding with the Germans. So all Americans were asked that they had to leave because it was just the very beginnings of World War II. I grew up in America and had all my education here, including a bachelor's, a BA in history, an MA in counseling psychology, an MA in philosophy, and a PhD in educational psychology. I was married to Nader Ardalan in 1960. We moved to Iran in 1964, where I lived for 20 years. During that time, I studied at Tehran University, both in the PhD program for foreigners for one year, where I was classmates with William Chittick and his wife, Sachiko Murata, and taking classes with Dr. Sayed Hossein Nas, who was teaching courses in English on Sufism and Persian culture, because at that time I did not know any Persian. In 1973, I co-authored a book with my then husband, Nader Ardalan, called The Sense of Unity, The Sufi Tradition in Persian Architecture. I then wrote a book for Thames and Hudson, a British publisher, which was an introduction to Irfan called Sufi Expressions of the Mystic Quest. It should be noted that in English, both Sufism and Irfan are called Sufism. They don't make a distinction between the two in English. In 1976, I began a publishing company in Tehran called Hamdami Foundation. After the revolution, I changed the name to the Abu Zar Foundation and then Abjad Book Designers and Builders. During that time, I translated many of the works of Ali Shariati, including Fatime is Fatime, Hajj, Iqbal, and Manifestation of the Islamic Spirit. And the Iqbal book has two articles, one by Ali Shariati and the other by Ayatollah Khamenei. I had I accompanied Azam Talabani and nine other women to the International Women's Conference in 1980 held in Copenhagen, Denmark. As a translator, we were the first official group to leave Iran after the revolution. I was a translator for many of the Iranian parliamentarians who were members of the United Nations Interparliamentary Union. Uh, including Ayatollah Ali Akbar Nateq Nouri and Ali Akbar Velayati, and many others in the early days of the revolution. I left Iran in 1988 because my son, Karim, finished Al Bors High School and wanted to go to college in America and see his father, who he hadn't seen for seven or eight years. I worked for a year at the Al Huda Bookstore in London along with Mr. Ali Larijani, who was working on his PhD. And then my son, Karim, and I went to Albuquerque, New Mexico, in the United States, where I went to graduate school. I was then 50 years old and a grandmother, and I earned my two master's degrees and PhD at that time. So all women should know that it's never too late to get an education. In 1992, I began working with Kazi Publications in Chicago. I have been here ever since as the resident scholar. 
Kazi Publications is a Chicago-based non-profit organization founded by a Pakistani, Liaquat Ali, in 1972. They publish English books on all aspects of Islam, its culture and civilization, including history, art, and architecture, jurisprudence, philosophy, and so forth. Recently, they published the English translation of 12 volumes of Islam, uh, Imam Shinasi of Ayatollah Tehrani. My first project here was to discover the origins of what Americans call the Enneagram. Ennea means nine in Greek, and gram means point, so it's nine points. I have written a three-volume work on what in America I call the Sufi Enneagram that dealt with what uh, dealt with Futuvat and Moravat, that I call moral healing. It is being used today in Iran under the name of Nuhkane Irani because of its Iranian roots. My representative in Iran is Mashid Razavi Rezvani. She is the CEO of Mashid Kherat Institute of Culture and Art in Tehran. I have also written Sufi Enneagram, Secrets of the Symbol Unveiled, Sufi Enneagram, Spiritual Sign, Sufi Enneagram, Spiritual Warfare. The Mashid Kharat Institute has undertaken the Persian translation of these works. I have taught courses at the Mashid Kharat Institute through Skype and am going to be teaching courses to a group of the International Enneagram Association in Cairo, Egypt, through another software program called Zoom. One of the other major projects I have done while here at Kazi Publications was an English translation of the Quran called the Sublime Quran. Uh, the Sublime Quran means Qurana Azim. It has been very well received in the English-speaking world as it is the first critical translation, English translation, by a woman. Tahere Safarzadeh, may God rest her soul in peace, also did an English translation, but it is not a critical translation and reads much like the Abdullah Yusuf Ali translation in English. By critical translation, I mean that I pay special attention to the grammar of the Quran and indicate a plural pronoun such as them, as feminine, with an English read, which an English reader would not know whether them is feminine or masculine. And so the, once I put this paren open parentheses with an F, uh, close parentheses following it, they know that it is a feminine pronoun. I also translate the word kafir as ungrateful, wherever possible, as this is what the word also means. This makes it much more a much more inclusive translation, as we can even name Muslims who are ungrateful to God for their blessings. One of the major differences with other translations and my translation is of chapter Surah Nisa, chapter or ayah 34, where I indicate in the in introduction that daraba means to go, also means to go away and that this is what the Prophet did when he had difficulties with his wives. In addition, if you translate Surah Nisa, Ayah 34, as beat, you create a contradiction that is not in the Quran with Surah Baqarah, Ayah 231, where it says that husbands who are about to divorce their wives cannot harm them or commit aggression against them. As Islam promotes marriage and discourages divorce, creating a contradiction between 434 and 2, 231 promotes divorce rather than marriage from a woman's point of view. In other words, I would rather be divorced and not physically harmed than to be married under the threat of being beaten. In addition, men who beat their wives do not follow the lightly theory that is not in the Quran and comes from the Old Testament story 
of Job and Rahma. I was not aware of this, if this method would work uh, at the beginning, because having studied educational psychology, I realized the importance of a translation, particularly that of a sacred book, having internal consistency and reliability. In order to do this, I translated from each of the words rather than going from the beginning of the Quran to the end. This allowed me to create a database that I was able to use for further work that I will explain. So I was not sure at the beginning if this would work, but two years later I was speaking to a friend, an American friend, who had converted to Islam, whose father had been a Christian minister. I told him the method I was using and said that I was not sure it would work. He said, oh, that's how they translated in the 17th century the King James Version of the Bible. I felt blessed to have been confirmed in my method as the English translation of the King James Version of the Bible is still considered to be the best translation of the Bible. Prince Ghazi, the highest religious figure in Jordan, said about my translation, which by the way, has been included on his website, www.altafsir.com. He said, the work of Dr. Bakhtiar has put, that has put, she has put into her interpretation, the consistency, the method, the attention to tense, root, case, and detail is second to none. I have never seen its like before. The English reading of it is also lovely and smooth. This is clearly a blessing of God that God has blessed her, mashallah. It took seven years to complete the translation. My next major project for Kazi Publications was to compile and edit the complete canon of medicine of Ibn Sina, which you see here, these five volumes. I had adopted volume one from a translation done in 1930 by a man named Dr. Gruner. He had an important job in his notes. He did, uh, sorry, he did an important job in his notes where he compares what Ibn Sina wrote to scholastic philosophy originated or continued by Thomas Aquinas, who was to write, whatever Ibn Sina writes is correct. This is an important connection for English speakers to the canon. I compiled volume two from several translations. Their problem had been that they had followed an Arabic alphabet in English transliteration, so it was impossible for an English-speaking reader to find anything. In addition, they were poorly done and full of typos. I put the topics in English alphabetical order and added beautiful 16th and 17th century paintings of the simples that are included in Ibn Sina's text. In addition, I paid special attention to the chart that he had developed for the work and explained each technical term with a definition under it for easy access by the reader. For instance, when he says a simple is dissolving, what does that mean? Or when he says it is hot in the first degree, what does that mean? And I just wanted to show you an example of what I mean here. In volume two of the canon, and I've saved this page to be able to show you, like these are the beautiful drawings that are included for each one of the simples, and below it is the beginning of his chart, and you can see the rest of his chart here with the description, if necessary, of one of his technical terms. And also explains what the first or second degree of a medicine is. Kazi Publications then engaged an Iranian physician, Paymon Ardel Sardo, to translate volume three, and my grandnephew, Hamid Reza Dustar, PhD, to translate volume four. I compiled volume five from existing translations that had the same problems as translations of volume two, which I've mentioned. 
I have sent a detailed analysis of each one of these volumes that you can read for further information. In 2010, after finishing the translation of the Quran, and while the translators were working on volumes 3 and 4 of the canon, I compiled the Concordance of the Sublime Quran, and what can be called in an English translation of Mujim al Mufaris. As I had created a database with the English translation of the Sublime Quran, I then transliterated the 3,673 three-letter and occasional four-letter root words of the Quran into English so that a person does not need to know a word of Arabic to use the concordance, which then makes the Quran accessible to more people. This is at the beginning of the book. Each root word is numbered and opposite appears a page number. The text follows the mujim with each entry stating its English translation along with its Arabic transliterated into English. The, its grammatical format and chapter of ver and verse appear in, as it appears in the Quran. At the back of the book is a 7,000 word English dictionary of the various words found in the Quran. And I'll just show you that. So the front part is where I mentioned the 3,672 root words are, and you can see that they're all transliter transliterated into English, and each one is numbered, and there's a page number following that, so you can either find it in the text through the top of the page that will give you the root number, or through the page number, and each entry has its grammatical definition as well as the surah and ayah in which it can be found. And then in the back is the 7,000 word index uh, of the different words in the Quran, and it gives the root word and the number where someone can find it. As I found many American Muslims familiar with the Hadith, but not as familiar with the Quran, and particularly the Quranic commands, I wrote a book called Quranic Sunnah, which contains all the verses that are directly stated to the Prophet using the second person singular, thou, thee, or thy, yani to in Persian, and the Quranic imperative verses, which are God's commands, including all of the verses that begin with the word say, or qul. At some point around 2014, I realized that translating the Quran had taught me critical thinking. I wanted to know more about it. I found out that the United States Department of Education trains all teachers in the United States with critical thinking skills. One of the first books I had done when I came to Kazi Publications was to write a high school textbook on the life of the prophet. The book was finished. The Georgetown University professor, John Esposito, had written a foreword. Everything was checked and ready to publish. And then one day I looked at the book and I thought, how can I write the life of the blessed prophet with only a few references to Quranic verses? His life is the Quran. Of course, we do need one volume works on the life of the prophet, but we also need at least one that contains the Quranic verses that relate specifically to his life along with the history of his life. That is, I put the stories of the lives of other prophets mentioned in the Quran in books 25 through 28 so that what is left is the first 24 books that relate to the 23 years and 5 months of the revelation, 23 years or 3 months as some say, specifically to the life of the prophet. I looked at all the English translations of the Qurans available at that time and found that there was no consistency or reliability in the translations. Some, like Muhammad Asad's The Message of the Quran, was really an interpretation, a good one, but not a translation and so on. That was when I decided to translate the Quran myself. I had studied Arabic at Tehran University and then with a private teacher for five years where I learned Arabic grammar, particularly Quranic Arabic grammar. Now the translation was published, and it was seven years later. 
I realized that in order to have the life of the Prophet contain all of the Quran, the Quran would have to appear in chronological order. I did the chronolo chronological Quran, as you see here, as revealed to Prophet Muhammad. I used the chronological order of the surahs that was the official one sent to me by Prince Ghazi. I checked and it was exactly the same as Jafari sources except for the last surah revealed. I then studied with the community of critical thinkers and was able to learn the standards. There are nine intellectual standards, eight elements from which develop 35 strategies, and then there are seven moral Quranic standards. I was blessed to complete the 30 books that you have seen. I have sent a complete summary of what each book contains that you can refer to for further information. Now, alhamdulillah, I am just finishing Quranic Psychology. It's a textbook on the soul and the nafs and what, does, what is it in, in terms of psychology. It includes not only Quranic Psychology, but the Quranic philosophy of psychology as well, based on the works of Malasatra. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video.